Hello and welcome to this webinar. My name is Jaffney Joybert. I'm a doctoral candidate in business administration with specialization in entrepreneurship and investment with Kesmans International University, America. This video and webinar is part of my doctoral program with um, KIU. And this course is on global economy and innovation. The aim of this course is to um, bring that introduction and insights on the global economy and innovation, especially um, helping SMEs or entrepreneurs, startups across Cameroon and Africa to understand some of the basics and the important knowledge they need to be aware of as far as these important business uh, um, elements are concerned. And many of the examples that we will use throughout this session will focus on the African market and sometimes more specific um, in Cameroon. So let's begin by looking at really what is the meaning of global economy. The global economy refers to the interconnected worldwide economic activities or business activities that take place between multiple countries or multiple continents. And these business activities can have either a positive or a negative impact on the countries um, involved. Or you can simply put, or we can simply um, agree that it is the system of trade and industry across the world that has emerged due to globalization. In other words, the way in which countries, economies have been developing to operate collectively as one business uh, system. And there are a couple of, of, of global economy, types of global economies that is important to, to understand because different countries may operate different types of economies. And it's important to understand, uh, like if you're venturing to to expand into another country, it's good to understand the type of economy that a particular country actually operates uh, 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 or, or, or respect. And it is you know, a system of trade that it's important to, to pay attention to as far as business is, 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 is concerned. And there are, uh, the first one is the free market economies. In a free market economies, um, you, which you can also call the capitalist economies. Uh, this is where businesses and individuals have the freedom to pursue their own economic interests, agenda, buying and selling of goods on competitive markets, which naturally determines the fair price for goods and services. So the key stakeholders in the marketplace and the private sector uh, are actually carry out um, key activities in this particular economy. The command economy is uh, known as often as a centralized, centrally planned economy because they say it is it's being managed or planned by the central or the national government. And generally, communist states have um, command economies. Um, for example, China used to function a lot, although part of their operations are still kind of sent a command kind of economy, uh, but they're gradually moving from that towards the capitalist economy. And so in, in, in a typical communist society or command economy, the central government controls the entire economy in terms of allocating resources, dictating the price of goods and services, unlike the capitalist economy. And of course, we have the mixed economy, uh, uh, which is where uh, uh, it's a combined uh, uh, element, it's a middle of combined elements of the free market and the command economy or the central economies. And even among the free market states, the government usually takes some action to direct the economy. These moves are made for a variety of reasons. Most of the times uh, um, to protect certain industries at home or to help consumers uh, 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 and it's so that they can, they can respect, um, maybe we can call it consumerism, or you can respect local industries or local businesses to help them compete with multinational uh, businesses. So what are some of the factors that uh, can affect global economy? And I'd like to talk more of the recent factors uh, uh, so that we can actually see how 
recent happenings can actually affect the global economy. The first one, we're going to talk about global political issues. I'd like to talk about uh, the Brexit, which in the last, um, let's say, four, three years have actually shaken the whole world with, 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 with Britain leaving, uh, leaving the EU. That, that is a, a, an important global political issue that will definitely, or is already affecting the global economy um, so strong. The trade wars between China and the United States, two top economists are, are, are having some, some, some trade wars actually affect how the global business performs. Tech, technology innovation, tech innovation is, 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 is like leveraging on connectivity, network um, effects, artificial intelligence, unprecedented scale to create global platforms. Like, for example, look at what Facebook has done. Look at what um, Instagram, uh, uh, LinkedIn, YouTube. You see, these platforms, unlike 20 years back, you know, uh, uh, the, the world was not so connected, but social media platforms or, or digital platforms uh, have greatly influenced the, the, the growth of the global economy because we can sit at any moment in time in less than seconds, just a few seconds, we're able to connect to one another from different countries, share ideas and, and perspective. The evolution of money also has greatly contributed to the growth of, of, of the global economy. For example, we're talking about cryptocurrency, right? Uh, in 2017, uh, the research says that there were over 680 new cryptocurrencies that had market caps of over $1 million. But just in 2021, um, Bitcoin alone is already having a market cap of $1 trillion uh, um, US dollars. And uh, the, the, the movement of money as a result of these cryptocurrencies uh, 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 is, is, is much faster uh, uh, it's much speedy and, and it's much more efficient than it used to be 5, 10, 15 years ago. So also the evolution of online education has greatly affected the global economy. You can sit anywhere in the world and able to take a top MBA program, a top doctoral program, a top certification program, or you're able to exchange with experts of anywhere in the world. You come together and you are able to build or create something amazing because of easy access to education and knowledge. Signing of trade deals also affects global economy. When nations are, are, are signing trade deals, like for example, uh, two, three days ago, uh, Britain signed a trade deal with Cameroon and many countries are signing trade deals. And the signing of these trade deals and treaties enhance the movement of people and goods between these nations. And it leads to uh, um, a good effect and definitely also a bad effect to any country. The creation of trade-free zones on the 1st of January this year, the African Free Trade Zone actually went operational, trying to bring the African continent as a single trade block. That, that is a powerful gift to, to, to Africa, bringing 1.2 billion people to easily travel and do business uh, with, 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 with little or no restrictions in terms of travel, customs, um, and visas, and so on. This um, greatly impacts global economy. Africa is the youngest economy so far, and top fastest green economies in the world are in Africa. So this will definitely influence the global economy. And number seven, international transactions influences or affects global economy. The function of the global economy can be explained through one single word, transactions. International transactions taking place between top economies in the world help in the continuance of the global economy. Now let's look at the characteristics of uh, um, the global uh, uh, economy. Number one is globalization. Globalization. Globalization describes the process by which national and regional economies, societies, and cultures have become so integrated through uh, the global network of trade and communication and immigration, transportation. These developments lead to the advent of the global uh, uh, economy. Number two is international trade. International trade is actually considered to be an impact of globalization. When globalization is effective or is growing, international trade will definitely grow. And it refers to the exchange of goods and services between different countries. And it has also helped countries to specialize in products which have a comparative advantage, which they have a comparative advantage in, in, in this product because they focus on what they are good at, they focus on what they have, they multiply it, the ripple effect is there, and they're able to import what they don't have and export what they have in enormous quantity. 
international finance. Of course, we cannot talk about it, uh, global economy without talking about international finance. Money is very important in global economy. Money can be transferred at a faster rate between countries compared to goods and services and people, making international finance one of the uh, primary features of the global economy. That is why uh, Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies in general has greatly affected global economy and influenced global economy like 10 times faster than any other uh, um, kind of uh, um, technology or, or, or instrument. International finance consists of topics like currency exchange, money transfer, monetary policies, and, and, and so on. Global investments, of course. This refers to the investment of strategy, to an investment strategy that is not constrained by geographical boundaries. Global investment mainly takes place via foreign direct investment. For example, we have angel investors in Silicon Valley investing in, 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 uh, in Nigeria, in Nairobi, in, uh, in, in South Africa, in Johannesburg, investing from the comfort of, of their cities in different countries around the world. Angel investments, uh, venture capitalists, uh, investment funds, and so on, this enhancing uh, um, global economy. Therefore, what are the benefits of the global, of global economy? Number one is free trade. Free trade is an excellent method for countries to exchange goods and, and services, and it allows countries to specialize in the production of those goods which they have a comparative advantage in it and are able to import what they don't have that comparative advantage. And then number two is the movement of labor. You know, as you want to see how the movement of labor impacts the economy. If you look at what the world went through in, when COVID-19 came and airports were shut down, it affected the global economy so terribly. Unemployment was high, uh, uh, poverty increased, and so on. So when, when people are able, when, when experts and professionals are able to move freely, it affects uh, uh, the global economy positively. That's why increase in migration of labor force is advantageous for, for the recipient country as well as for the workers, even for the country they're living because they're going to send money back, back home. Good. Next is increased economies of scale. The specialization of goods production in most countries has led to advantageous economic factors such as lower average costs and lower prices uh, for customers. Increase in investment, we spoke about that due to the presence of global economy that has become easier for countries to attach short-term and long-term investments. And investment in developing countries goes a long way to improve their economies, uh, improve uh, living standards and fight against poverty and, and build stronger uh, economy. Opening larger and more diverse markets, of course, when they because businesses have that chance to go to, to other markets and, and, and be able to open up themselves to the global marketplace where they will find a larger market and sell what they're producing. Of course, collaboration and shared resources. Yes, the global economy leads to collaboration and shared resources between people and nations, companies, and this helps people to come together and solve global problems uh, with one another. So in really now, what is globalization? Globalization is the free movement of goods and services and people across the world in a seamless integrated manner. And globalization can be thought of to be the result of the opening up of the global economy and the concomitant increase in, in, in trade between nations. And we can also say that the global globalization also means that countries are able to liberalize um, their visa rules and procedures so as to permit free flow of people from country to country. Like visa um, free countries, nations are signing protocols and, and, and collaborations to enhance this. And uh, uh, globalization results in freeing up of all productive sectors to investments and productive sectors to, to export related activities, resulting in a win win situation for the economies um, of the world. And of course, globalization has negative effects. Free trade can harm developing countries. It's always said that in, when it comes to free trade, uh, uh, only developed countries get to better uh, uh, get to, to benefit. And of course, infant industries get to suffer when there's a lot of free trade because uh, um, companies who come from developed countries with so much money, resources, assets, expertise, and they're able to can swallow up the market from small economies. Number two is environmental costs. One of the problems of globalization is that it, it has increased the use of non-renewable resources, and it has also contributed to increased pollution, global warming, and firms can also outsource production to where environmental standards are less uh, strict. Labor drain. Globalization enables workers to move 
more freely. Therefore, some countries find it difficult to hold on to their best skilled workers who are attracted by high wages elsewhere, like, um, for example, in Europe, in America, and they leave third world countries, developing countries, and seek for um, leaner pastors. Now, let's talk about the five um, major drivers of globalization. What are those key things that greatly influence globalization? Number one is technological drivers. Technology shaped and set the foundation for modern globalization. Innovations in transportation, technology, um, greatly change the industry and influences globalization. For example, high-speed trains. You see, uh, 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 um, social media, uh, um, virtual uh, tools, virtual communication platforms like Zoom and Skype and Google Hangout, all of these things are drivers of globalization. Political drivers, of course. Liberalized trade rules and deregulated markets lead to lower traffics and allowed foreign direct investment in almost all over the world. And that's why institutions like the World Trade Organization, the Africa Free Trade Zones, um, contributes to enhance uh, uh, glo uh, globalization. Market drivers, of course, as, as domestic markets become more and more saturated, um, the opportunities for growth are limited. Therefore, companies are forced to seek for expansion in other countries leading to uh, globalization. Cost drivers, sourcing efficient, efficiency and cost vary from country to country, and global firms can take advantage of this effect. Other cost drivers to globalization are opportunity to build global scale economies. For example, look at most global economies, uh, especially those into manufacturing, they have a lot of factories in China because there is available level, there's cheap level. Look at uh, Apple as a factory in China, Tesla as a factory in China, uh, um, so many companies, there are many things that when you, you, you can buy from Amazon, you think you're buying from the US, they are being shipped from China because that's where my heavy production or manufacturing is being done because they have access to a, a high level and cheap level at the same time. So cost drivers or cost efficiency can drive businesses to, uh, uh, to go global, to go international, and this leads to globalization, competitive, drivers with the global market, global uh, uh, international firm competition increases, globalizations are forced to play on the international uh, 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 scene. Good, so that is it about uh, some insight and some concepts as far as the global economy is concerned, which is important for um, us SMEs and startups to understand how these things work so that as they plan to grow or expand, they can take advantage of of these opportunities, know what to avoid and know what to implement. Now let's talk about innovation management, which is super exciting uh, um, model uh, or, or business element that I think is important for startups, SMEs, and even large executives to master. Before we go to innovation management, let's look at what is innovation. Innovation is derived from the Latin word innovar, and it stands for renewal, renewal. From a business point or economic point of view, innovation is something new that brings benefits to the business and or to the society. Therefore, innovation management is the systematic promotion of innovations in an organization. And it includes tasks of planning, organizing, management, and controlling. That means you, you, you are able to perform these managerial functions in terms of managing uh, innovation. And innovation management deals with all measures to promote innovations in organizations and to generate benefits like new products and services to conquer new markets. These are examples of benefits that innovative management or innovation management generate for a business or an organization. New products and services are, are produced to conquer new markets, improved products and services to stand out from the competition, improvement of internal processes in order to strengthen the company from within or to save costs, development of new business models to exploit um, new sources of income. And why is innovation management so important for uh, any business, any size? Because innovation management is critical to having a sustainable business because it enables one to look ahead into the future and come up with new and creative ideas which the competitors 
would not have thought about because there's a dedicated team or manager or department responsible for innovation management. In short, innovation management is significant because it is what helps a business remain competitive in the long run by letting it always stay ahead of competitors and have greater profit margin because they create time and focus on managing innovative ideas and turning them into impactful ideas that can lead to profitability and impact in the society. Innovation management makes it possible to systemize the process of capturing, refining, and implementing groundbreaking ideas. So this is a process. Innovation management makes it possible to systemize the process. It's a process of capturing, refining, and implementing groundbreaking ideas. To drive innovation, the executive will need to have the process in place to solicit ideas from the target audience. And the target audience here could be employees, customers, partners, stakeholders, competitors, whoever and then sort the gold from the gravel. When you have all of these ideas, the innovation management process enables you to sort out the, the right ideas from the bad ones and focus on the gold and not the gravel. And for innovation management to be successful, there should be a manager. There should be what we can call innovation manager. And an innovation manager is an enabler who creates structures. It's an enabler who creates structures and processes so that innovation can happen in the organization. So they are able to create structures and processes to promote innovation or the culture of innovation. Also, he's also a promoter, especially in the field of culture. He promotes the culture of innovation where he works to persuade and disseminate the necessary knowledge of innovation. Innovation manager also seeks and develop ideas and handles innovation projects that are responsible for developing innovative ideas and handling innovation projects. That's why the, the project management of innovation is, 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 is a very important task that cannot just be, you cannot just leave it to any person. There must be a manager responsible for that, especially due to the scope the interdisciplinary and complexity of innovative projects. The project manager therefore coordinates all process steps and tasks and is responsible for achieving objectives. Now let's look at the types of innovation. Number one is incremental innovation. This is improvements to existing mechanisms uh, uh, whereby incremental innovation spot opportunities for improvement within existing tools, within existing systems, within existing technologies, within existing markets, and improves it, and improves it. That means there's that consciousness that we need to make sure that we are looking at what can we improve as far as our processes, technology, markets, teams, tools are, are concerned. The second type of innovation is disruptive innovation. It is this, this kind of innovation is most widely linked to Apple, Apple iPhone, that which uh, Apple, Apple was the first company to move away from buttons, keypad, or, or scroll wheels as far as phones are concerned and created a screen touch kind of phone. That was a disruptive innovation. There was already, phones were already in existence, but they had to disrupt how phones are created or or, or, or manufacture. And disruptive innovation is often expensive and considered superior to anything else in existence, right? Superior to anything. So the Apple smartphone is considered superior to, let's say, a Blackberry phone or a Nokia um, touch phone kind of example. So it's, it's, it's not just new to you, but it is, it is totally new in the industry or in the marketplace. The third is architectural innovation, um, which is like using a system or technology in a new way. Architectural innovation is taking something that already works and using it in a different way or in a different market. Now you can take a new product 
and you take it to study new market and you test the product in, in that market. So number four is radical innovation. This is, you can call it mind blowing innovation. It is where new industries are born and entire movements are created. It is where some of the greatest entrepreneurs and innovators like to play. It is a high risk, but also high reward for anyone able to pull it off. The first airplane, the, the first mobile phone, the first laptop, the first tablet are examples of radical innovation. The first car is a radical uh, uh, innovation. So what, therefore, let's briefly look at the method of innovation. What can lead to innovation really? Brainstorming. Sitting with people and you're brainstorming different ideas and breaking them down to understand how they work. Empathy mapping, whereby you're able to fit yourself in the shoes of the person that you're designing the, the product for. Developing empathy, empathize. Next is, uh, uh, we can call it, rem remember the future model, whereby you're asking the question, what should our product do in the future? And you design something for the future. Also, a day in the life of the user, this way by the designers or the entrepreneur are able to observe individuals through a typical work day, recording their activities and taking notes about how they experience uh, uh, their environment. Let's look at the sources of innovative ideas. These are three main sources. That there could be other sources, but I think that these three sources are very important to pay attention to as far as business is concerned. Industry and market changes, complaints from users, new knowledge, this can lead to innovative ideas as far as the business world is concerned. To conclude, understanding how the global economy works is imperative for international expansion. And understanding uh, how innovation management work is imperative for business sustainability. Thank you so much. If there are any questions, you can drop them in, um, in, in, in the chat box and we'll react to it. Uh, thank you for following. God bless you.